I finally had the chance to shoot with a real Leica 35 millimeter camera. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the photo department. This is an episode that I eventually wanted to make and I was very lucky to be offered the opportunity to borrow a Leica camera from my friend Christine. She owns this uh, M6 right here. She had it sent out for repair, I think a CLA maybe, and then when she got it back, she asked me if I knew what kind of batteries it took or if I could help her change the batteries. So I went over and showed her how to open it up and then um, I was just kind of playing around with it and she offered to let me borrow it for a couple of weeks to put some film through it and I wasn't going to turn that down. So I've only put one roll of film through it and I plan to do another roll before my trip on Sunday, but it's thir- Thursday night now. Uh, yeah, it is night. It's like seven o'clock or it's like eight o'clock at night. I'm drinking herbal tea because I don't want to be up till two again because I'm so very tired. I've never really been the kind of photographer that assumed that if I were to one day be able to afford a Leica, then I would be like the next great photographer or something. I think there's a lot of lore and a lot of reverence placed at the feet of Leica and Leica cameras. I certainly think they're cool, but I never really lusted after them like so many other photographers do. Leicas have always kind of been to me a status symbol more than anything. A camera is just a light tight box with a shutter and a lens attached to it that lets you take pictures. And while there are certainly really cool cameras, I don't know. I just always thought like, yeah, yeah, you can afford a $5,000 camera. You're super cool and everyone knows it. But that's mostly because I hadn't shot a Leica camera yet. I did shoot the M9 and the Digital M when I worked at the studio a couple years ago, but I don't think that really captures what it's like to actually shoot a 35 millimeter like a rangefinder. Christine had already loaded the camera up with a roll of Portrait 400 and hadn't shot anything on it yet. And so I took it out and just started shooting. What I noticed first about the camera was the weight. It's not prohibitively heavy in the way that you're gonna not wanna carry it around, but it also has this very specific heft that feels very affirmative. It's 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 a good feeling in your hands. It's also nice because this camera isn't necessarily large and I have pretty big hands so that the, the form factor plus the weight makes it feel really comfortable for someone like me that has big hands. Uh, the second thing I noticed was the focusing ring. Um, this is the 35 millimeter F2 uh, Summicron. This is the only Leica lens I really have any experience with, 
but that focusing lens is, is so smooth. And then I noticed how bright the rangefinder patch is. And that was significant because I have an Olympus XA. I've owned two of them. And I also had a, um, a Yashica Electro 35, which is a rangefinder style camera that has a fixed lens that you can't take off. Both of those cameras have rangefinder patches and they're pretty dim. <laughs> they're not very easy to focus on, but this I'm in relatively low light or the camera over there is in relatively low light, but I can see the rangefinder patch line up perfectly. It's, it's pretty cool. It's obviously very well designed. And then the, the last thing that I noticed uh, that really stood out to me was the shutter sound. It's not very loud. If you're out on the street and you're taking a photograph of somebody, there's a good chance that they're not going to hear that. It's also just very satisfying pressing this button. It's a very nice shutter button that has a good amount of, um, has a good amount of resistance. So when you press it, it's like really, really nice. So there's no doubt that this camera is incredibly well designed and feels really great. Funnily enough, the camera that it reminds me of the most is my Nikon F2. A couple of the things that it reminds me of right off the bat are the weight and the feel. You know, they feel a little bit different, but there's a similar kind of weight there. The Leica is a little bit lighter, um, but not by much. But the kind of experience of like holding it, it's kind of a similar feel to me. And I think that feel can mostly be described as just well-designed and mechanically sound, if that makes sense. Everything is is tight fitting. Everything is is very accurate. Everything feels like it's in the right place. Uh, the buttons and levers all feel like a positive action. There's no wiggly, weird, imprecise parts on it. So that that's a very similar experience. The difference is, you know, you're looking through a lens on an SLR. On this, you're looking through a viewfinder, rangefinder window. And then the other part that's really unmistakable. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't sound anything like the Leica shutter and it's certainly not, it's not, it's not like incredibly loud, but it's much louder than the Leica, the Leica shutter. Like if I were to take this outside and I took a picture of someone that was standing a few feet from me, they would a hundred percent hear this, but it would have to be very, very quiet outside for them to be able to hear the shutter from the Leica. Also the F2, while not a huge camera is pretty bulky while the Leica is obviously much sleeker. Oh yeah, my, my F2 has a brand new um, Matt Day signature strap from Sleepwalk. Shout out to Matt Day and Sleepwalk. The big question for me is if I take photographs with this camera, with this Leica glass, am I going to notice a big difference between these photos versus photos from like, say, my F2? really curious about this because there's this kind of like feeling that if you shoot like a camera is like you're a better photographer or it'll make you shoot better or something and the like a glass is legendary so i just went out and shot a roll and wanted to kind of take a look and see what uh i thought of the images and i'm curious what you guys think of the images it is glaringly obvious why so many famous youtubers and bigger photographers shoot like a camera shout out Matt Day, shout out Joe Greer, especially the M6. This camera is just kind of like the peak German design. The meter in this camera is crazy accurate. The feel, the finish, the way everything works. It's just like obviously designed like crazy. 
it's designed so well. And looking at these images, it's like, yeah, I really like these. There is a character to the like a glass that's unmistakable and it looks, they look great. They're really, really incredibly good 35 millimeter images, but <laughs> I didn't notice I didn't think that these pictures were so much better than the pictures I make on my F2. My Nikon glass is incredibly sharp, incredibly nice. It, they render images really great. The out of focus elements look amazing. And uh, there's a reason why these cameras are workhorses. They just work and they work really well. The meter in the M6 is really accurate, but so is the meter in the F2. I think what it comes down to for me is that while this camera is really, really awesome and an incredible feat in human engineering, so is the Nikon F2. <laughs> I feel like I need to spend more time with the Leica. I feel kind of funny making this point because you know, I don't think anyone's arguing that the Leica cameras are better than any other cameras on its face. It's just another tool in order to take photographs. But I feel I feel like for me, what's really important and what's really different about the Leica cameras is the experience while shooting them. You take photographs differently when you're taking them with uh, a Leica rangefinder. You hold the camera differently. You approach subjects differently. Um, looking through a rangefinder window is a very, very different experience from looking through the lens. And it's very obvious why people really prefer this experience. It's really nice. It's it's premium. But I kind of don't need that experience personally. I think by and large what this experience has kind of taught me is that this camera exists. I understand now why people go crazy over these cameras and why people will pay crazy prices for them. It's it's obviously a very a very nice experience shooting with these cameras. But it kind of like... It got me over this hump of like wondering in the back of my mind, like, oh, should I get a Leica? Like, should I buy a Leica camera? Like, is it going to make my photography better? Am I going to like seem like a more professional photographer, whatever? Because I got to have this experience of shooting with it and now I understand it. And so it's not a mystery anymore. So yeah, it's nice, but it kind of makes me appreciate my Nikon F2 a lot more because... Now I have like this high watermark of what excellent engineering and what a good camera is. This camera, this Nikon isn't far off. I feel like a lot of the feeling I got shooting this Leica, I get that same feeling shooting this camera. So if anything, this experience kind of made me appreciate what I have even more, which I think is cool. And it's a really cool place to be because it really sucks when you're lusting after something that you can't afford and you're never going to be able to afford it or at least not anytime soon. And you just kind of have to like wistfully dream about it. But now it's like, oh, okay, I understand what this is. I know what it's like. I know what it's for, but I have this and it makes me appreciate this even more. So thanks Leica. <laughs> I didn't really have any expectations going into this. I was really excited to finally try and shoot a Leica to try to see what the hype is about. And I get it now. Like it makes sense. Like this camera's amazing. And it's amazing that I can see the difference and it can make me appreciate what I already have, which is so, so cool. So if you are out there lusting after a Leica, if you want an M6 or an M3 or an M4, they're amazing cameras. If you can find one for a good deal or even not a good deal, if you can afford it, like go for it. It's definitely an experience shooting with these cameras. For me, one day I'll probably own a Leica, but it's no longer that mysterious landmark way off in the distance that like I can barely see. Also, I feel like I would feel super weird walking around holding a like almost $5,000 camera kit around my neck. <laughs> it's a very expensive, uh, very expensive camera. But look at it. Look how nice it, look at, look at this finish. Listen to that. Let's listen to that uh, shutter one more time. Yeah, that's really nice. I'll take two. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for joining me on my Leica M6 experience. Um, I hope this was entertaining. <laughs> if you have any questions about this camera or questions about my experience with it, or if you want to make fun of me in the comments for not getting it, I'm sure I'm going to get some of that. Please do so. I'd love to talk to you guys about it. If you 
have any tips about affordable Leicas that you think I should check out? Or if you think there's a specific Leica model that I should check out specifically, let me know. I would love to see and, and shoot more Leica cameras. If you have an Icon F2 and feel the same way that I do, more appreciative of what you have, yeah, let me know. I want to know how many of you are out there. Thanks for watching. Thanks to Matt Day and Sleepwalk for these awesome straps. Thank you to Christine for letting me borrow your awesome Leica. I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm going to go to bed.